There's excitement in the chase, this I know Yeah, I'm going for the ride and by myself I am After our first day at the City of Arts and Sciences in Valencia, today we are going to explore some of the treasures and iconic sites of this fascinating city. We head to the subway and arrive to Colon Street. And since we are in Spain, the city is not still fully awake. This was actually something that had already struck us during our trip in Andalusia. Today, the day promises to be hot, very hot, around 42 degrees Celsius. So we take advantage of this slightly cooler morning to explore the streets and alleys of Valencia. And later, we will visit a few museums to stay cool. We walk through the nearly deserted streets of the city, amazed by the beauty of the buildings. Translated as a duck fountain, La Fuente de los Patos is a historic fountain built in 1853 and founded by La Sociedad Económica de Amigos del País to provide drinking water to this area of the city. Just behind the fountain, there is the 18th century church of Santo Tomas y San Felipe Neri and it's a perfect example of Valencian Baroque architecture. A few meters further, we discover the church of San Juan del Hospital, which was a priory of the Knights of the Order of St. John of Jerusalem. Completed in 1261 and considered the first church built after the Christian conquest, its interior features tall Gothic vaults, pointed arches, and ornate pillars. It was also used as a hospital providing medical care to the sick and needy in the 13th century. A unique element of the church is its cloister, which is one of the few surviving Gothic cloisters in Valencia. It's a historical and architectural treasure that bears witness to the religious and cultural heritage of the city. The Marques de Campo Palace is a residential building constructed in the 17th century with renovations carried out in the 19th century. Formerly the residence of the Counts of Oloco, it was purchased in 1840 by José Campo Pérez, the first Marquis of Campo. He redesigned the façade, giving it its current appearance and expanded the building with adjoining houses, creating an architecture centered around the courtyard. Later, it was acquired by the Counts of Berbedel, who were responsible for the decoration, restoration and interior design of the rooms. The grand staircase leads to a landing that connects the various rooms in the palace, such as the ballroom and the empire room, which are currently exhibition halls, many of which still retain their original decoration. The palace was restored in 1989 with the purpose of housing the Museum of the City of Valencia. In a second intervention in the 1990s, adjacent buildings were incorporated while preserving the façade and emptying the interior to complete the museum's exhibition program. It showcases a selection of the city's rich artistic collections, notably the paintings, mostly by Valencian artists, represent a long historical period dating back to the 15th century. The diversity of themes, styles, authors and trends is one of the highlights of this art gallery with its content 
periodically changing due to the large number of unexhibited works in the Museum of the City's collection. As we leave the museum, we pass through some alleys and head towards Trinity Bridge, which is the oldest in the city with its construction commencing in the early 15th century. As for the sculptures of the saints, they originated from the St. Joseph Bridge and were relocated here in the mid 20th century. Now arrive at the Museum of Fine Arts, where you'll primarily find works by Valencian and Spanish artists. The museum is divided into two parts, the Old College, for training of priests, arranged around a cloister, and the adjoining temple is on an octagonal floor plan that rises under a beautiful dome with blue glass tiles. What is most remarkable here is undoubtedly the magnificent collection of altarpieces. The museum houses arguably the largest collection of international and Hispanic Flemish Gothic altarpieces in the world. You'll also discover works from the 16th centuries, the Renaissance and the Baroque era, including paintings by Ribera, Velázquez, artists from the turn of the centuries like Sorola, whom we mentioned in the first episode, as well as some works by Goya and El Greco. The architecture of the museum is impressive. Originally, it was a college for priestly education. The St. Pius V Palace is an architectural gem worth visiting in its own right. Founded by Archbishops Juan Tomás de Rocaberti, the building was initially designed by the Valencian Baroque architect Juan Pérez Castiel, in 1683. However, construction was delayed for a long time and the project didn't begin until the 18th century. Originally, the Baroque door of the San Julian convent was located on Calle Sagunto within the old San Julian convent. When the convent was demolished, the door was relocated to the Jardines del Real. We take a relaxing break in the garden, surrounded by lush greenery and natural beauty. Established initially by the Arabs, the historical character of these gardens, their vastness and splendor, the abundance of sculptures, monuments and fountains, make them one of the most remarkable in the city. In the Jardines de Real, you'll find a wide variety of trees with more than 2,700 specimens, representing 167 different botanical species. Located in a former water reservoir for the city water supply, the Valencia Museum of History was inaugurated in 1850. The entire structure, entirely made of bricks, represents the most beautiful examples of 19th century industrial architecture. Here, you can discover Valencia's past in an enjoyable way through exhibitions that recalls the events that shaped its history. You'll find a rich collection comprising artworks, archaeological objects, 
treasures. Scientific instruments, books, clothing, and more. This allows you to immerse yourself in the atmosphere of each era, get to know the key figures, and delve into their adventures. The time machine allows you to travel to the era of your choice and explore it. You learn many interesting things while discovering old relics. Founded in 138 BC by the Roman consul Decimus Junius Brutus Calaicus under the name Valencia Edetanorum, Valencia became the capital of the Kingdom of Valencia in the Middle Ages. As the third largest city in Spain by population, its metropolitan area is home to approximately 2 million residents. This is where you discover the famous story of the birth of the Turia Garden, which we mentioned in the first episode. The city was traversed by the Turia River, and it was after the great flood of Valencia in 1957 that the decision was made to divert the river and turn it into a gigantic garden. Work began in the 1960s and its former bed is now converted into green spaces, the Turia Gardens. An archive film presents this history in a small cinema. After this truly interesting visit, we find ourselves in the Parque de Cabecera. It's one of the largest green spaces in Valencia, offering a peaceful retreat and a range of recreational activities in the heart of the city. Located near the bed of the Toria River, this park is a green oasis that allows residents and visitors to connect with nature and relax. The park provides a variety of walking trails and cycling paths, perfect for leisurely strolls or family bike rides. It's also home to the Biopark of Valencia, a zoo that recreates natural habitats for a variety of exotic animals. It's an ideal place to escape the city's hustle and bustle and enjoy nature. Urban art in Valencia is ubiquitous and you can find it almost everywhere. Here we are on Blenqueria and Guillem de Castro streets. Urban art is simply a must-see in Valencia. You will discover numerous artworks along the streets. And we arrive at the premise of the Red Cross, Cruz Roja, where a local artist named Andro D.R.K. has painted a mural related to the location. In the mural, you can see two Red Cross women sitting on chairs, their hands reaching out to an elderly person, rescuers in their canoe, a woman offering food and another distributing a package. This mural encapsulates all the missions of this organization. There are even several graffiti routes created in Valencia, especially in the common neighborhood, where you can explore an open-air museum a journey through the Toria Gardens, discovering its graffiti and wall paintings. Bridges, sports fields and garden huts along its nearly 10 km course have become open canvases for street art. That's how 11 graffiti and abstract art artists participated in a project to create a mural along the garden stretching from Capsalera Park to the Montolivet Bridge. We arrive at La Casa de los Gatos. It's a peculiar miniature house that serves as a residence for the cats in the popular Carmen neighborhood. The decoration consists of a three-story facade and a balcony. You can admire many details such as a fountain, a balcony, figurines, a street number and more. Next, 
a Centro del Carme Cultura Contemporanea welcomes us with a retrospective of the career of the artist Paloma Navares, a multidisciplinary visual artist residing in Alicante with an extensive creative career both nationally and internationally. This exhibition includes a carefully selected range of her works focused on human beings, particularly women, in their socialization, symbolization and representation. Whether you are an enthusiast of contemporary art, culture, architecture or simply curious and leisurely strolling, the Centro del Carme will charm and surprise you. Entrance is free and the setting is exceptional. Right next to it, on Plaza del Carmen, stands the statue of the painter Juan de Juanes, who was considered the most important painter of his time in Valencia, often referred to as the Second Raphael. Opposite the statue, you'll find the church of the former convent of Carmen, founded in 1281. Continuing our walk down Carrer de Baix, we discover more street art painted on the facades of the buildings. In an adjacent street, we come across El Portal de Valdina, built on the Muslim wall on an ancient access road to medieval Valencia. A few meters further, we find la Torre del Henrel, a tower that was part of the ancient Arab wall of Valencia. It gets its name from its location next to the streets Henrel and Beneito y Col. Dating back to the 11th century, it's one of the few remnants of the Islamic era in the city and is surrounded by private residential courtyards. We arrive in Calle de Serranos, near the Plaza de Manises, where we catch a glimpse of the Torre de San Bartomeu. It was built in 1239 and was one of the initial churches constructed in the city of Valencia after being conquered by James I of Aragon. Continuing our walk, we catch sight of the Serranos Bridge with its two towers. The Serrano's towers were built by the master builder Pere Balaguer between 1392 and 1398 and are one of the main gates of the medieval city walls. The building is symmetrical with two pentagonal towers that are 33 meters high. The central building contains a vaulted gateway. The north facade, facing the old river, is richly decorated with ornaments indicating that the towers had not only a military defense role, but also a representative function. Beside the Serrano's towers, only the Quart Towers gate has survived from the 12 original gates of the city. The beginning of the Falas, a traditional Valencian festival, and one of the most important in Spain, is traditionally celebrated in front of the towers. It's a traditional celebration held every year in commemoration of Saint Joseph. Falas are sculptures mainly made of cardboard and can reach several meters in height. The celebration lasts for five days from March 15 to March 19, while the Mascleta, a pyrotechnic show, takes place every day from March 1st to March 19th. We arrive now in the district of La Plaza de la Virgen. The Palace de la Generalitat Valenciana is a Gothic palace located in the center of Valencia, where the President and Council of the Valencian Generalitat holds their meetings. It served as the headquarters of the institution responsible for collecting taxes on imports, exports, purchases and consumption of certain products. On the Plaza de la Virgen, 
you can find the fountain of the Eco Sasekia del Turia. Located behind the Basilica and in front of the Puerta de los Apostoles, it was made of bronze by the sculptor Manuel Silvestre Montesinos and inaugurated in 1957. The fountain reflects the use of the Turia River before the 1957 flood, which caused 80 deaths and extensive damage. At that time, Valencia had more than 17,000 hectares of crops easily irrigated by the river's waters. The oval-shaped fountain consists of a central body and eight female figures. In the center, there is a man with a shiny bird lying on a water sheet with bent legs and his right hand raised. In his hands, he holds the horn of Amaltaya, known as the Horn of Plenty, inside which are the fruits of the Valencian orchard, demonstrating the region's agricultural wealth thanks to irrigation systems. This man, very similar to the Roman representation of the god Neptune, symbolizes the Turia River. In fact, this monument is often known as the Fountain of Neptune due to its strong resemblance to classical works of Greek and Roman art. Around him, there are eight pedestals on which eight young women stand pouring water jug into the fountain. These eight female figures represent the most important channels of the river, and their names appear at the base of each one. The Basilica of Valencia is a baroque temple dedicated to the saint patron of the city. It's the largest religious building constructed in Valencia during the 17th century. It was built between 1652 and 1667 and it's the only church in the old town whose location does not correspond to an old parish church or convent. Another of its peculiarities is that the dome is aligned with the cathedral. Its remarkable camarin is a characteristic element of the Baroque era, a kind of chapel where the image of the Virgin is venerated, accessed by a staircase. And we continue our journey and pass by Iglesia de San Lorenzo constructed in the 13th century on the remains of a Muslim mosque. With the scorching heat getting to us, just as it does to our phones, we stop to savor a delicious horchata, a refreshing beverage we mentioned in the first episode. And in Valencia, horchata is often served with fartans, a kind of sweet brioche-like pastry which we, of course, indulge in. We head to the beach to end our day. And while waiting for the bus, we discover the bronze model of the Serrano's Gate. Once we arrive at the beach, we relax while admiring the sparkling waters of the Mediterranean Sea and the beautiful sunset. See you tomorrow for our third day of Discoveries in Valencia.